Howdy gang and welcome to your third WebSockets tutorial and in this video we're going to start using Socket.io to work with WebSockets. Okay then, so just going back to this diagram. In the last tutorial we created our Express app and we created a server on Node.js. So that's this thing right here. Then what we did is we served up some public files and one of those public files was the index.html file and we served that up to the browser when we requested it, okay? So we've got all this running now. Now what we want to do is start working with WebSockets and we're going to use a library called socket.io to do that. It makes it really easy for us. So we're going to use socket.io by installing it in both the back end on the server side and on the front end okay so now when we request this index.html file socket.io is going to be set up in there and also in the index.js file socket.io is going to be set up in there as well so what we can do then because we've got it set up on both sides is use it on both sides and we can establish this socket connection between the two okay and pass data along them so that's what we're going to do in this tutorial Okay then, so I'm back in index.js, which is running on the server, and the first thing I wanna do is install socket.io on the server side. So to do that, I'm gonna open up this command line tool, then say npm mm -hmm. install socket.io, and not uo, io, and I'm gonna install this and save it to the dependencies, okay? Okay, cool, so once that's installed, we can then use it on the server side. So in this index.js file, I'm gonna require it, I'll say var, and I'm gonna store this in a variable called socket, and set it equal to require, and we're requiring socket.io, okay? So now we can use it in this file. Now, how do we actually set up this socket.io? Well, all we need to do is come down here, and I'm gonna create a little comment called socket setup, and we can say var io, this is a variable, and I'm going to set it equal to what we just required up here, socket. And this thing that we required is a function. So we're just going to invoke this function, okay? And this function takes a parameter, and that parameter is what server we want to work with. Now, remember, in the last tutorial, we set up this Express app, and we created this server, and we stored it in a variable. Stored it in a variable so we can take it and pass it in to this socket function. So we're now saying we want socket.io to work on this server, okay? So now that is going to set it up for us on the back end. So the way that this works is that socket.io is going to be sitting around now on the server waiting for some kind of client, a browser, to make a connection and set up a web socket between the two. All right. So what we can do is we can listen out for when that connection is made. So to do that, we can take this variable we've just created, io, and we can say dot on connection. So this is going to listen out for an event called connection, right? And that event is when the two connect, when we make a connection from a browser. So then, when we make this connection, we can pass in a callback function which fires. So once the connection has been made, this thing fires right here. And inside here, we could just for now, console.log a message. So I'll say console.log, and we'll say something like made socket connection, right? And inside this callback function right here, we can pass a variable which is gonna to refer to that instance of the socket which is made, right? That one particular socket. So say we've got 10 different clients all making a connection. Each one is gonna have their own socket between that client and the server, right? So when one particular client connects, we're gonna listen out for this connection method. It's gonna to connect to the server. We're gonna fire this callback function, which then passes through this socket, which refers to the socket between the client that's making the connection and the server. Makes sense? And we can do stuff with this socket object later on. So for now, let's just save it. And if I go to the same web address right here, at the minute, nothing is gonna happen. And we can see in the console, in fact, we need to say nodemon index, first of all, to actually run this file. Okay, now if I go to 4000, yep, we get that back, but down here, we're not logging this made socket connection. We're not actually connecting to it yet. Why is that? Well, I said that we need to set up socket.io on the server, which we have done now, and on the front end. So let's set it up on the front end first of all, then it's gonna make that connection when we request that index file, okay? So let's go into the index file first of all, and what we need to do is load in the socket.io library onto the front end. 
So if you go to the socket.io website, then you're going to see in the top right hand corner this download version, uh, download button right here. And we want the top one. So I'm just going to copy that and we can paste it inside our index.html file right here. So I'm going to do that just above the star sheet. So I'll say script source is equal to what we just pasted, uh, copied. I'll paste that in there. And then we have reference to this now in this file. Now, we also want to create our own JavaScript file where we're going to run all this kind of custom socket.io code. So I'm going to make reference to another external file, which I'll create in a minute. And this is just going to be called chat.js. So we'll say script source equals forward slash chat.js. And we need to store this in the public folder. So I'm just going to save this and create this file now. So new file chat.js. OK, so now inside this file, when we get this index.html file served to us in the browser, it's going to load in this library. Then it's going to run this file down here at the bottom. So in this file, we want to establish that connection to the server to create this web socket between the two. All right. So let's say right here, make connection. So how do we connect? Well, because we loaded in the library right here, we have access to the IO variable, right? So I can say var and create one called socket. And this is the socket for the front end. It's not to do with the socket here. They're two different variables. This one right here is running on the server. This one is running on the front end. OK, so we can have two different uh, variables called socket. That's fine. So we're setting that equal to IO. And we have access to this because we've loaded in the library on the front end IO. And to make a connection, we say dot connect. And we're going to say where we want to make this WebSocket connection to. So we want to go to the local host. So I'll say HTTP forward slash uh, local host and it's port 4000 that we're listening to on the server. So we can pass in that. And then now when we load up this index.html file in the browser, we're going to run this file and we're going to make that connection, right? So when we make that connection in the index file, we're listening out for that connection right here. Then we're going to log this message. Make sense? So now let us run this. Are we running it? Let's check. We need to say, oh, no, we don't. We're running it already. Cool. So let's refresh this page over here. When we refresh it, is this going to work? Let's have a look. Well, now if we open up this, it says made socket connection. So we have made that web socket connection and now there's a socket running between the client, the browser and the server and we can start to pass data between the two of them. Pretty awesome, right? So just there quickly to run through it again, we have created our express application. We've created a server and stored it in this variable. Then we've required socket.io to work with web sockets. Down here, we've created a new variable called IO and we've set it equal to socket, which is what we, we required. And we're invoking that function and passing through this server we created. OK, so now that's setting up the sockets on the server side. Then we're listening out for a connection by saying IO dot on connection and when that connection is detected when it's made then we're firing back this callback function which is taken through this socket and it's got information about that socket and we can do stuff with it later and it's logging this message all right so we're making this connection right here from the front end by loading in the library to the index file right here okay then in this file that we're running at the bottom, we're making that connection by saying socket is equal to IO. We can use this because of the library dot connect, connect to this thing right here, localhost 4000. So when we load this index file in the browser, it's making that connection. We're listening for that connection right here, logging this message. OK, so let's just do one more thing. I want to show you this thing right here, the socket. So I'm just going to actually log this to the console as well. So I'll do a comma right there and then say we'll log the socket. And what I'm going to do is log the ID. It's got a property called ID. If I just log socket, it's going to be loads of junk, tons of properties. We're not interested in most of it, but I'll log the socket ID. So if I save this now, what we can do is view it in a browser again. And if I refresh, then open up this console right here, we can now see this socket connection, right? So it's a unique ID. If I refresh again, we're going to get a different socket connection. So every time we refresh, every time a different computer connects, for example, 
if I paste this in a new browser, imagine this is a new computer somewhere else in the world. When they connect, they're going to get their own unique socket ID, their own unique socket between the client and the server. OK, so now we're all ready. We've connected. We've made this WebSocket connection and we're ready to start transferring data. And we're going to do that in the very next tutorial by starting to create this chat application.